Hi, and welcome to the special edition of the Macro Show. We talk macro and try to make sense of markets that really don't make any sense. I'm your host, Steve Van Meter, and thanks for joining me today. I want to do a follow-up from yesterday's video and go through some of the charts and some thoughts that I've had since yesterday's show and look at some other charts on Christmas Eve. And hopefully you'll enjoy today's show. So let's jump right in. And you, know, you might remember yesterday we were looking at this chart of TLT provided by my friend Stefan. And below that, he put the commitment of traders, the net speculative short position here. And I'm not sure people fully appreciate what, you're, what they're seeing here because this is not meant to be a timing indicator at all. It just shows you positioning. So what you have is contracts. There's over 200,000 short contracts in the 30 year long bond in the futures market. And each of these contracts, every single one of them is worth $100,000. So you can see since these August highs, there was an increase of 100 plus thousand short contracts and that's substantial. Now, if you don't understand what being short the market is, well, let's just take a look at it from a position of an equity. So let's say that you were going to short a stock, maybe Tesla, right? No one would ever think about doing that because it hasn't really worked for anybody. But let's say you took a short position anyways, and Tesla stock went up 10%. What happened to your position? Well, it went down 10%. So you didn't just lose 10%, you also lost the 10% gain of the stock. So you're, now you're down 20%. And that's what makes shorting the market rather dangerous. This is why most investors are just long equities or long bonds, long commodities, because they don't have the danger of being on the wrong side of the trade when the market rises. So think of this from the bond market's perspective. You have all these people who are short, betting on lower bond prices and higher treasury yields. Now, does that really make sense? Well, we know that bond prices are likely to rise and yields are likely to fall. Why do we know that? Because the Fed is buying bonds. Large commercial banks are buying bonds. Foreign uh, governments and central banks are buying bonds. We can look at Japan and see that quantitative easing is more likely to be disinflationary or, disinflationary or deflationary than it is inflationary. We can look at the large commercial banks and how they're positioned uh, in the credit markets. Well, they're not really positioned, are they? Uh, they what's going on in the credit markets on the H.8? And we see a massive deceleration that's heading into contraction. That doesn't generally lead to higher interest rates. We see tighter lending standards across the board, some of the tightest lending standards in history. That doesn't lead to higher interest rates. So all these speculators who are short the bond market if bond prices rally, as I expect them to, they're not just going to lose out on the gain of bonds. They're also going to take a loss on their short positions. And that's why I believe when all of these massive contracts and think about it, you have 100 to over 200,000 contracts valued at 100,000 each. That's a substantial amount of bonds that will need to be bought just from the future side of this market. So that's one reason I think you know, we're going to see a massive rally in bonds. Now, I also want to talk, look back at this dealer positioning chart. And this is really interesting to me because, you know, a lot of people think, oh, there's going to be inflation. There's going to be, you know, a, a fall, a higher interest rates, lower bond prices. And if you want to know what the dealers think, well, you got to look at their position. Now, why would the dealers matter? You know, think about this. If you go to a casino, right, or, or Las Vegas, perfect example, if you go to Vegas, you know, you're betting against the house and the rules are set up for the house to win. Now, there's going to be times when they lose that they're going to be wrong, but they're going to be far more right than wrong because we all know casinos and Las Vegas, they weren't born or they weren't built on losers at all, not even close. So, you know, when you look at the dealer position, it tells me that they're not worried either about a big drop in bond prices or a spike in interest rates. And let's take a look because if we can go back this chart in 2009, you see the dealers were, were rather short, you know, in, in the market, they were fairly short compared to where they are now. Now, where were bonds at the time? Well, let's take a look at a chart of 30 year treasury yield. And we can see, well, going in 2009, yields had had that big waterfall drop. So dealers were now more concerned about rising interest rates. So they were short the bond market to protect their positions. Because what do dealers do? I mean, what is their role in the, in the market? You know, they buy bonds at auctions and then they sell them over time to other investors or institutional managers, pension funds. They, they're dealers. So what is their risk? Their risk is naturally 
that if bond prices should go down, they need to hedge that. That's why they're in the futures market. So here they are, and you can see them hedging that position pretty substantially. So they knew and felt the probabilities that, that interest rates were gonna rise were high enough that they needed to take a fairly severe short position. Now this makes sense. Now let's take a look at what happened following that. Now going into 2011, you know, roughly almost late 2011, it, dealers are slightly short. So the net, you know, the, the zero bar is right up here across the top. So they're barely short now. Let's go and take a look at what happened with treasury yields. And in late 2011, well, you can see that yields are starting to fall. So they're not that worried about it. So here you are late 2011, no concerns at all. And then going into 2012, look, the dealers are short again. You know, they're not as short as they were in 09, but they're short again. And sir, oops, you, you couldn't see that, could you? Let's go back. <laughs> There we go. And here you can see they're short again, right? And look what happens in treasury yields. Now they're near a bottom. So you see a rise in yields now going up into 2013. Let's see what happens here. And sure enough, dealers you know, back off of those positions going into 2013. They're not that short again. And so over the next several years, uh, you see the 2014, you know, there's a slight increase in their short positions. And in 2014, uh, we have a, you know, a drop in yields going into a short rise in 2015 and then another drop. So let's go and look at what happened in 2015. And sure enough, they were slightly short there hedging that position. So the only spot they really missed was 2016 following the election. The dealers were fairly neutral here. And as we all know, yields really rose pretty substantially off of the election, but the dealers weren't all of that, they weren't that worried. This was a very short-term drop. So you see they didn't really need to hedge that. And then let's look at the, where they were positioned going into 2018, where we see yields drop. And in 2018, you know, they're almost even, almost even. And then they're forced now to be short because of all this speculative short positioning that's built up by the spec, you know, on the speculative net side here uh, on the downside of the bond market. So the dealers are hedging, but what does it tell us? You know, they're not back at the levels they were, you know, in 2012 or in 2009. They're not anticipating a big move higher in interest rates. In fact, it's starting to appear, you know, and this is something we'll be watching in the show in the weeks and months to come is what's going on with dealer positioning because it's looking like they're starting to unwind some of those short positions. And if they do, well, that tells us that the most likely path for yield is going to be lower, not higher. So what we're seeing here is the dealers are not concerned that rates are going to rise. And again, this comes back to if, if you really didn't know anything about the bond market or where interest rates are going, who would know the most? What well, would be the dealers? Because they're the only group in this country that is buying at auction with this explicit goal to resell for a profit. So if dealers are massively short, well, that tells you what they think rates are more likely to rise. If they are not that short or you see their short positions unwinding, it tells you they're not that concerned about rates going up. They think rates are more likely to go down. So I thought that was pretty interesting. Those are my insights. Maybe maybe you disagree with that view, but I thought that was uh, pretty interesting. And we'll be watching, of course, to see how these positions move. And if they continue to unwind, well, that tells us that the most likely direction for interest rates is lower, and that could trigger a big unwind out of these speculative short positions. Now, Sentiment Trader posted these charts on Twitter. Some of you saw them, and I thought, well, uh, for those of you who don't have Twitter or didn't look at these, I think these are real neat. So let's take a look at uh, what Sentiment Trader had to say. And uh, they had 12 charts. You had the most confident dumb money in history. Now, smart money is going to be your institutional money managers or professional money managers and retail. Retail investors are considered the dumb money and they're extremely confident about the market so much the most in history. Let's take a look at the next chart here is you have the highest market value relative to economic output. And that's just saying that compared to what the economy is doing, stocks are extremely overvalued, the most in history. So people are betting on a huge recovery in the economy. Well, and if they're wrong, well, that could be a dangerous position to be in. Let's keep going. 
You have the highest, nearly the highest concentration in stocks in terms of percentage of total assets, meaning most Americans have most of their net worth tied up in the equity market. That has been a dangerous place in the past to be when your net worth is tied up to that. Not to mention, you have the highest concentration uh, or massive, inf not the highest, but massive inflows into ETFs. And what that means is simply not only do Americans have all of their or most of their net worth tied up in the stock market, if you look at how the market cap weighted ETFs are, the, most of their net worth is tied up in a very small number of companies, somewhere about five to 10 companies, all of their wealth is tied up in. And that to me is pretty crazy. Even foreign investors have joined in the fray with massive flows into US equities. Everyone around the world is super bullish on US equities. And even mutual fund managers are all, all in. And you see mutual fund cash levels are at their lowest in history. And what this means is if there is a risk off event and people start leaving their mutual funds, well, the mutual fund managers don't have enough cash to buffer a large amount of selling, meaning they'll have to become sellers of equities too. And even active managers are massively levered up to the largest degree ever. They're certainly massive. Well, maybe not as much as they were here in uh, late 2017, early 18, but they're massively levered up. So everyone is levered long and all in on the U.S. equity market. And then you look at the option speculation. You have the <laughs> most speculative options market in the history in 20 years. And I don't know if this goes back further. It says at least, yes, yeah, so it must not, at least in 20 years. So when people talk about, well, quantitative easing causes stocks to go up. If you look at these charts, what it causes is people to take massive amounts of risk. And they're not even concerned about the downside of the market. Because if you look at hedging, people protecting their portfolio or money managers protecting their clients' portfolios against a downside move in the market, it's really low. So what that's telling you is people are buying up equities with massive amounts of speculation and are zero concern or zero downside risk to hedge if the markets go down. And you have the uh, biggest concentration of indicators showing excess in more than 15 years. Uh, obviously, we see that in the data. Massive amounts of excessive risk on the U.S. equity market. So if anything should go wrong, there's no downside protection. You know, no insurance on people's portfolio. And there's a few people, perhaps I and you being a small number of them, are starting to price in a potential crash. We've been seeing that this market and the economy are misaligned and more likely to go down than up. And even corporate insiders, they're net sellers. They're, they have been dumping their shares into the retail flow giving you an insight of what they think. And even our friend over at Hedgeopia, you know, he had this great chart the other day about how margin debt has exploded to new highs. You know, people talk again about how QE is so bullish for asset prices, causing them to go up. It just causes massive speculation on the hope that it causes asset prices to go up. And even the NASDAQ McClellan summation index, it's sitting at its highest level in five years. And when it gets way up at these points, it usually signals a reversal in the equity market. So I hope you enjoyed today's show. I want to wish, again, everyone a, a happy Christmas Eve. And uh, next up, I'm going to start working on the Christmas Day special. So look forward to that. And I will be back uh, with you on Sunday for the chart show. And then, of course, uh, Monday for the macro show. I'm Steve Ann Meter. Thanks for watching. Bye now. The content of this video is provided as educational information only. It's not intended to provide investment or other advice. This material is not to be construed as a recommendation or solicitation by or sell any security, financial instrument, or to participate in any particular trading strategy. This video was prepared by Stephen Van Meter on personal capacity. Opinions expressed in this video without do not reflect the view of Atlas Financial Advising or Stephen Van Meter Financial.